Hi, welcome to our presentation of Data Quilt, a tool for crafting pictorial visualizations using uh, elements from raster images. I'm Fanny, and this work is in collaboration with Aries, Nicole, and Anastasia that are going to speak in a moment. But before we start, take a moment to look around you. The nature, the paintings, the buildings, even conference hotel carpets, there are beautiful patterns everywhere around us. And as these great artists, uh, Georgia Lupi and Stephanie Pozelvik suggest, these patterns and everything you see and like can become design material for your data. So for instance, imagine that you'd like to visualize your coffee intake over the course of the week. You could of course uh, show traditional visualizations such as uh, the bubble chart here, but it's impersonal and your audience would likely forget uh, this graph in, in just a couple days or a couple hours. But if you take pictures of your own coffee, if not, you probably have a friend posting such pictures on Instagram. But point is, if you have photographs like this, you can use them in your visualization to create visualization just like that. So this shows my data. I drink espressos, lattes, cappuccinos, flat whites, and so forth. And I decided to show them here with different uh, coffee cup styles. And I use the size of the cup to convey the volume of the coffee I drank and the orientation of the handle of the cup to show at what time in the day I drank the coffee. So we could use some of the great tools uh, that have been proposed recently to create such visualization, but we'd have to be comfortable manipulating vector graphics or sketching. Problem is we are pretty terrible at drawing. So instead, we would love to be able to pick and choose and combine visual elements and patterns from around us, or even from people more talented than we are. So look at this beautiful watercolor painting image. Wouldn't it be great uh, if we could borrow elements from it to create our visualization? We can extract, for example, graphics elements or shapes to use as glyphs, and we can also borrow color palettes and visually rich patterns that we can use for shape fillings or decoration. So in our work, the vision is as follows. We want to extract patterns from raster images and then bind them to our data to create visually rich uh, pictorial visualizations. Hello, I'm Aris, and here is a preview of how this is achieved in Data Quilt. Here I have loaded the reference image with cups. We can extract them any region from the image, like this cup, and refine our selection with background removal aided by image processing techniques. Saving the selection as a new glyph in the glyph library. Before I create the visualization, let me add a background image here. Let's bind our graphical elements to data. I drag a cup from the glyph library and bind it to the data table, which results in creating one cup per data atom here. Now I want different cups to represent different types of coffee. So I now map the glyph variable variables to the coffee type data dimension, and then assign the desired coffee cup with the different types of coffee in my realization. Here I also map the size of cups to the volume of coffee. Then I map the x axis to the day of the week. And I finally map the rotation to the time in the day. Data atoms can be moved freely on the canvas via direct manipulation while maintaining the data constraint here, the X position. We were inspired to work on this project after attending the workshop conducted by Georgia Lupi at the WIS conference in 2017, where we had to draw visualizations bearing inspiration from existing visual resources such as abstract paintings. We saw here an opportunity we can borrow from images around us to allow everyone to create beautiful realizations. So our first design goal became to lower creativity barriers. To put it differently, allowing non-artists to create really rich realizations from existing images. To better understand what features people will borrow from raster images and how they will use these features in their creation, we conducted a workshop to learn how people will do this. We had 20 participants across two sessions. Participants were given, first of all, a data set, and also a collection of images covering a concreteness spectrum from well-defined objects to abstract paintings. 
We ask the participants to create visualizations of the data set that borrow something from this reference image. And here is a small sample of the several visualizations created during the workshop. We analyze their cre the creations by comparing with the reference images and accounting for their exponential tax on the right when provided. And here's what we learned from the experience. So first, we found that people extract regions from images to use as glyphs in the visualization. This includes clear closed regions like the asteroid and the planets in this reference image, as well as looser, more freeform regions like the steered blocks in Kandinsky's painting. This calls for robust glyph extraction to support shapes of various forms. DataQuip provides that flexibility via different brushes. Let's start by extracting a clear closed shape. We select an image and create a rough outline around the shape we want. There's a faint beige background here that we can get rid of with a background removal tool. Great. Now, for more organic shapes, we can use a brush tool. And here, I'm selecting a ring shape containing these beautiful abstract textures. We can then use these glyphs to map them to the data. And relatedly, we also want to be able to make changes in the visuals while maintaining a linkage to the underlying data. And here we can change glyphs, resize, and reposition the glyphs in vertical, horizontal, and freeform layouts all while maintaining data binding. Another extraction pattern we found from the workshops was the use of things like color, textures, and style as visual features of the data, uh, as well as non-data decorations. To address this, data quote allows for the extraction of color palettes from images. Say we want to apply a Kandinsky-inspired palette to these boring black rings. We can use an automatically extracted palette uh, for the number of colors we want, we can make our own by manually setting the number of colors and dragging the color pixels around the image for the colors we want. When we are satisfied with the result, we can save the palette. And apply it to our data. We can also extract textures to apply them to shapes. Uh, by dragging and resizing this tile. And if the tile is too small, DataQuid applies a mirroring technique to avoid pixelation. When we are ready, we can save and apply this texture to the glyphs. And in this example, you'll see that each data type can be assigned a different texture. Back to the workshop findings, we found that people manipulated glyphs in multiple ways to represent data. Besides regular uniform scaling, in this example, the scaling was applied only to a part of the glyph, just the tail of the comment. As for this other comment example, participants actually replicated parts of the comment tail instead of stretching. And sometimes they also replicated the entire glyph as a pictograph. DataQuote supports these manipulations via a variety of scaling operations. We can specify what area we actually want to have stretched, fixed, or replicated, as shown in this image. Finally, uh, we should add one last design goal, supporting fast iterative creation workflows, pertaining to our overarching concern of supporting iteration, trial and error, and experimentation. So we'll now talk about how we validate the data quote. We first ran a usability study to see if novices could actually use the tool. So we invited 10 participants and we asked them to reproduce the images you see here on the right using a think aloud protocol. We then invited back some of the participants from the first study that had rated themselves high in terms of design and art, 
And here we wanted to actually see if they can realize a vision of a visualization, if they could express this vision. And we asked them to use any data set they wanted and any source image. And these are some of the results they came up with that we will revisit just in a bit. You can find the details of our findings in the paper, but I will highlight here some that are common across the two studies. So one of the first things that came out of it is that it's actually fairly easy for participants to use across the two studies, and it made some hard tasks easy for them. So in the example you see here on the right, the participant extracted easily the skylines of different cities to use as glyphs in this visualization instead of doing it by hand. And then they had the flexibility to play around with different data bindings. The second thing we observed across the two studies is that the tool supports different workflows and participants do actually adopt different workflows. Mm -hmm. So this image here comes from the first study, the usability one, where we see that some participants focus first on perfecting their glyph before going to the visualization design, whereas others went back and forth between editing their glyphs and editing their visualizations. One of the comments that we got from the second study, the open-ended study, was the great expressive power of the tool. And we can see this in different uh, places uh, in the results. For example, here we see the different types of glyphs that people used in one visualization. We can see it in the type of embellishments, like the rows here that somebody used to complement their visualization. And we can also see it in the very different and unique layout. So for example, here the layout is actually guided by the embellishments like the tree and the trees in the house. Finally, in both studies, there were comments about how safe the environment felt. People felt that they could try things out uh, and experiment. And this actually, in terms of the second study, people felt that this exploration power fostered really creative thinking and it sparked their creativity. So we can see here the images of uh, the same data set and these visualizations look very, very different. It's not the, just the data binding that changes, but it's also the a source image that uh, makes them look so different, the layout, uh, the background image, etc. As a third way to validate our tool and to push its limits, we created also a gallery, we as in the authors, in where we experimented with very different sizes of data sets, with different types of glyphs, uh, different source of Im uh, sources of images, and different layouts. And you can find all of these together with the material from our previous studies in our website. So we believe that Data Quilt actually goes beyond any other visualization tool because it makes the creation of beautiful and customized visualizations accessible to anyone, even if they have no artistic inclination and no experience in manipulating vector graphics. But as is the case of many creative visualization tools, it does come with some caveats. So because it makes the extraction of glyphs and embellishments very easy, it is possible that authors would use them as chart junk. And although chart junk is good for things like memorization, it does detract from the communication of data. The second caveat is that the authors might choose bindings that are not well suited for the underlying data dimension. We have taken some steps to mitigate this. For example, we propose discrete versus gradient color palettes for categorical versus numerical data, but there is always a potential for badly chosen bindings. So to summarize, we're very happy to introduce data quilts that is both an approach and a tool for creating beautiful visualizations where anybody can repurpose elements of raster images to use as glyphs in their visualization designs. And we do this aided by image processing techniques and a smooth iterative process between refining the glyph and refining the visualization. And we'll leave you with a code that prompts us to see the world around us as a starting point for creativity and self-expression. Thank you.